This week on How to Design Your Garden, we're going to cover plant material, where to buy it, and how to acquire it from non-traditional sources. Hi, I'm Heidi with Broadmeadow Farm and today's installment of How to Design a Garden we're going to be discussing plant material and I think this one is really important because you can put plants in the wrong place and really kind of frustrate yourself in your garden. The first thing to understand about plants is that they don't grow the same in every location. Plants can work in either full sun, part sun, and part shade or full shade and knowing how each plant works in those areas will help you decide where you're going to put it in your garden. As well, each plant has a different size requirement. You can have low ground cover type plants, you can have mid-range, you can have about three to five feet tall and then you can even have some plant material that grows quite tall. A lot of those large plants are going to be your shrubs and some of your really large overwhelming type perennials and you want to make sure you know how each of these plants work because they are going to determine how you're going to place them into your garden. So if you're really new to garden, you might not know how your yard actually works in terms of shade and sun. So what I recommend is that you would actually watch your yard a little bit, maybe a day or two, take notice of when the sun comes up and where it kind of creates that first sight line of sun, where the shade goes, map the shade. Does it go from one side of the yard to your next? Are you in a yard that has full sun because you have no trees or anything like that? Start taking some notes. If you live in town, a lot of your shade will be created by your neighboring buildings, houses, maybe it's a large high rise across the road. If you're on an acreage, you could be determined by a lot of your shelter belt trees. Maybe you have outbuildings like sheds, quonsets or shops. Maybe your house is just positioned such that you get quite a bit of shade on your north side of your house. So take some notice of each little thing in your yard and start writing down where your shade is, where your full sun is. When it comes to sun, not all sun is created equal. And what I mean by that is, when your sun comes up in the morning, you've got your cool mornings. It's kind of nice to have the sun, but it's a bit chilly in the morning. You might have to put a sweater on. So your sun in the morning is not as intense. It's also not as warm. So a lot of your plants can take a lot more daylight hours if they are earlier in the day. If you've done any working outside, you know that the closer you get to noon, the hotter and more intense your sun is. And that's going to also affect your plant material. So probably from your 11 till 3 or 4 in the afternoon, in the heat of your summer, those are your super intense hours of sunlight. They're going to give you the greatest hours for growing in your full sun gardens, but they also are going to be the most intense and they're going to affect plants that can't take the sun as much. The next type of sun you've got is your late afternoon into your early evening. It's not near as intense as your noonday sun, but it is a little bit more intense than your first morning sun. Again, this will be your sun that's coming from the west. It can often bake on the side of your house, creating quite an oven-like situation on the west side of your house. If it's out into your more of your open yard, it won't be quite as intense, but you need to till, still take into account that it's going to have quite a bit of heat units, and that will again affect your garden. So once you know a little bit more about how your yard sun and shade effect, then you can start looking at the buildings around you and figuring out why you're getting the sun and the shade that you are. You live in town and your houses are close together, you're going to have a lot more of dedicated shade based on buildings. You want to look at how tall your trees are, how far the shade comes out from the tree, so then we can start thinking about how big we can make our flower bed for each different type of plant material. So why is it important to understand shade and sun in your garden? It's because each plant grows differently. So if you think about a full sun sunflower, if you plant that little sunflower in a shaded area, maybe on the north side of your house, it's going to stretch and it's gonna be looking for the sun. And as a plant that is a sun loving plant is grown in the shade, they stretch, that makes the stems weak, then they also will be easier broken in the wind and they'll also be more susceptible for to disease. So growing a sun plant in the sun is the most ideal. But the opposite works for shade plants. So you think of a hosta, we think about them on the north sides of our houses, kind of in a shaded more, maybe canopy treed area where it's dappled sun. If you put that hosta out in the middle of your garden where it's going to get that intense summer sun, what's going to happen is it's going to sunburn the leaves, they're going to fade, and often they will just collapse completely because they can't take 
that heat. A lot of the time your shade plants also are a little bit more moisture loving plants. So that water requirement is also another thing that you need to take into consideration in your yard. Do you have a steep slope? Do you have a little bit of a dip that collects water every year or every time it rains? You don't want to put a drought loving plant in those little dips because they're going to drown. And the same fact that if you take those plants that are really good in the moist area and you put them up at the top of the hill or in a rock garden where there's a lot less moisture, they're going to dry out and die. So that leads into my next thing and that is educate yourself on plants. When I say you need to educate yourself on plants, I don't mean that you need to go to college and take out a, a diploma program in horticulture. What I mean is start talking to those people that are growing in your area. Maybe you have an aunt, a mum, a sister, a neighbour, someone in your area that grows beautiful gardens. Start talking to them, asking them what grows in your area. Also, the library is filled with abundance of books that will help you. But the key is to try to find books that work for our zone. So in here, in Alberta, we are primarily a zone two to four, depending on where you are in the province. Now, I live currently between Calgary and Red Deer, so I would say our zone here is between a two, maybe a three on a really good year. So some good books to recommend, especially for beginners, are the Lois Holes books. She has books on annuals, perennials, trees and shrubs, as well as one on roses. What I like about those books is that they are not super technical. So if you're a beginner gardener, it will talk a lot about how big they get, where they should be in your garden, whether they like moisture, whether they like dry soil. Knowing how your plants grow will help you determine where they will be in your garden. We aren't going to touch on actual designing your flower beds today. We'll leave that for a future video. But understanding plant material is really important. My next tip for choosing plant material is I think probably the most important for today. And that is to find your plant material from a reputable source. Now, there are multiple places that you can purchase plant materials big box stores, kind of your Canadian Tires, your Home Depots, your Walmarts. There's also the mom and pop little local garden centers as well as your big kind of garden center nurseries. Of those three, I strongly recommend that you shop your mom and pop garden centers as well as your large nurseries. And the biggest reason I recommend that you do this is because they are knowledgeable. You are going to be buying plant material that has been well taken care of throughout the season. You are going to find staff that has experience growing these plants. And if they don't, they have the resources to be able to focus you and direct you in the direction that you need to know. There is nothing like going to a nursery and saying, you know, I want a plant that's maybe three feet tall, I want it to go in the full sun, and I want it to give me flowers in the middle of summer. They can give you a whole list of reference. Now, on the other hand, those discounts and those sales at those big box stores, they are super tempting. But here's what I want to encourage you to avoid them with, is those plants have not been cared for the same way as in a nursery. The turnover of staff is a little bit higher and again they don't have the educated staff that's going to help you find that right plant material. So don't let price sway you to purchase things. Yes it's going to cost you a little bit more to buy your plant material from your educated nursery and your mom and pop garden centers but what you're doing is you are paying for quality. But of course you cannot forget there is another place that you can get your plant material. One, you might have an existing flower bed. Maybe you just purchased a home and it's filled with flowers that you don't know about. You also might have friends and family who have an overabundance in their garden. And every now and then your perennials actually need to be divided because they just get too big for their space. So that is, I don't want you to discount getting plant material from friends and family because often that's a great way to build a collection of something. I kind of have a thing for lilies. You've probably seen some of my lily collection in previous videos. So for me, acquiring things from people that are trusted will give me material that I know will give me the results that I need for my area. So one more little tip I want to leave you with before we end this video today is we are just entering into our prime perennial digging and dividing season. Next week we're going to take a break on how to design your garden and we're going to talk a little bit more about dividing perennials and prepping your garden for fall. 
We're not quite ready to be cutting down a lot of our perennials, but if you are ready to start moving a few things, I wanna make sure that you know how to move these perennials correctly. So come back next week and we will talk about dividing. If you have any questions on how to divide your perennial and what you can do and where you can divide, leave the comment below. Anything to, related to dividing perennials, I'll try and uh, address them in next week's video. Thanks for watching today and don't forget to like and subscribe because then you won't miss out on the videos that are coming up. Thanks and we'll see you next week.